Good morning. It is a pleasure to welcome you this morning to our annual HIDA Prevention Summit, part of a month of programming at the Office of National Drug Control Policy, commemorating October as National Substance Use Prevention Month. My name is Shannon Kelly, and I am the director of the National High Intensity Drug Trafficking Areas Program, known as HIDA. The HIDA program was created by Congress in 1988 and now has a presence in all 50 states, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the District of Columbia. We coordinate law enforcement efforts at all levels, federal, state, local, and tribal, to make our communities safer by reducing drug trafficking and production. HIDA's mission is law enforcement, but we accomplish that mission by investing in partnerships. Over the past decade, that investment has increasingly taken the shape of collaboration with public health partners. Well, this may surprise some people who think we're only focused on arresting drug traffickers. For those of us in the HIDA program, this partnership has been a natural outgrowth of our desire to reduce drug use and its consequences across the United States. Advancing prevention at the community level requires an in-depth understanding of the opportunities created through public health and public safety collaborations. We partner with public health agencies and prevention experts because we share a goal and a mission. We all want America's citizens to be healthy and our communities to be safe. Today, we will showcase the fine work being done at the national and regional level through the HIDA program and our many valued prevention partners. Before I turn the microphone over to our HIDA Deputy Director, Jamie Delano, I want to thank her and our team of HIDA prevention experts for coordinating today's summit and gathering all the experts to help us think about ways to approach prevention for maximum impact. I often brag that a signature strength of the HIDA program is its nimbleness and adaptability. The 2021 continued to challenge all previous notions of adaptability. It is a credit to the ongoing resourcefulness, determination, and creativity of Jamie and her team that we are reaching you here today. I hope you find today's summit helpful, thought-provoking, and even inspiring. Thank you for your work to prevent drug use, and thank you for your partnership. Thank you, Shannon, and thank you all for participating in today's annual prevention summit. We are pleased you could all join us today virtually. As Director Kelly mentioned, while HIDA has been extremely successful in achieving substantial impact on reducing the supply and demand of substances in our communities, over the last few years, we have naturally collaborated with public health sector in meaningful ways to enhance and strengthen the effect of our efforts. Public safety and public health represent widely different cultures, but HIDA has demonstrated the ability to marry skills and interests among these cultures to achieve the common goal of creating healthier and safer communities. As such, a variety of public health and public safety projects have been born thanks to the dedication and commitment of all of you to advance HIDA's mission and integrate its work into the bigger picture. In response to the amazing and fruitful work of the public health and public safety collaborations, an umbrella for this variety of projects has been developed to formally recognize an inventory of recent growth and development in this space, lay down an infrastructure for future growth and development, and develop supportive mechanisms that can ultimately cross-pollinate all of the initiatives and keep them healthy. One component of the framework is the HIDA prevention strategy. The strategy enhances the efforts of existing HIDA task forces, coordinates prevention efforts in each HIDA region, enhances real awareness, education, and prevention responses in each HIDA region, supports assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation for prevention efforts for each HIDA region. The HIDA prevention strategy promotes and supports the integration of innovative, evidence-based, and evidence-informed strategies to reduce substance use in the nation's communities. The HIDA prevention strategy seeks to serve as the prevention infrastructure that facilitates cross-sector collaboration and communication among its stakeholders. In addition, the HIDA prevention strategy functions as a catalyst for the development, implementation, and evaluation of prevention programming unique to the needs of the HIDA communities. The goals and objectives of the strategy include establishing prevention strategies in all HIDA regions 
with the objective for prevention experts to provide education and training to HIDA personnel and encourage partnerships with public health and public safety. Another goal is to use assessment and research to guide prevention efforts with the objective of selecting appropriate strategies to address top priorities needs within the HIDA. The strategy also seeks to sustain prevention strategies in all HIDA regions by evaluating and reporting outputs. And to achieve the goals and the objectives of the prevention strategy, a division for advancing prevention and treatment, formerly referred to as ADAPT, was developed and funded to ensure that the HIDA program is a good steward of HIDA dollars when funding prevention programs, utilize a needs-based approach for prevention programming, and finally provide that infrastructure for all HIDAs when funding prevention programs and efforts. And now I'd like to introduce Director Carr. He has served as the Executive Director for the Washington Baltimore HIDA since its formation in 1994. He also serves as the Executive Director of the Center for Drug Policy and Enforcement at the University of Baltimore. Director Carr designed and implemented over 150 drug task forces, 18 treatment, criminal justice, and drug prevention initiatives during the last 26 years. Please welcome Director Carr. Thank you, Jamie, and good morning, everyone. Um, before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone that earlier this week, we lost a valuable member of the Haida community, DEA Group Supervisor, Special Agent Michael G. Garbo, who died as, as a result of gunshot injuries he received during an operation in Tucson, Arizona. So if you would, just give him a few minutes of your thoughts. All right, well, good morning, everyone. So on behalf of the Washington Baltimore HIDA, I wanna welcome you to the 2021 HIDA Prevention Summit. Since our designation in 1994, the Washington Baltimore HIDA has been providing treatment and prevention services throughout our HIDA region. More recently, we joined with other HIDAs to create what you know as the Overdose Response Strategy, a partnership between law enforcement and public health prevention professionals. The Washington Baltimore HIDA recognizes the potential in an effective and streamlined system of collaboration and cooperation between law enforcement and public health professionals. Further, we're committed to responding to the substance use epidemic through the development of programs and products that address identified but unmet challenges. The Washington Baltimore HIDA developed two distinct prevention programs after listening to the expressed unmet needs of law enforcement and public health professionals, people like you. The first program, Overdose Detection Mapping Application Program, better known as ODMAP, focuses on overdose prevention. ODMAP provides real-time suspected overdose surveillance data across jurisdictions to support public safety and public health efforts to mobilize an immediate response to a sudden increase or a spike in overdose events. It links first responders and relevant record management systems to a mapping tool that tracks overdoses and stimulates a real-time response. Government Government agencies wishing to participate sign a data sharing agreement designed to protect the data within the system. And once signed, they can begin uploading data in real time through a variety of methodologies. The second program, and Jamie touched on this, the Washington Baltimore had developed in response to identify prevention needs was ADAPT, a division for advancing prevention and treatment. ADAPT is a collection of highly skilled, motivated, and experienced prevention professionals dedicated to operationalizing, operationalizing I'm sorry, HIDA's prevention strategy. While housed at the Washington Baltimore HIDA, ADAPT staff assist all HIDAs with translating, implementing, and evaluating substance use prevention strategies within their unique communities. It was just about three years ago I was speaking at an event at George Mason University when I came across another speaker who just wowed me. After hearing her speak, I know she was exactly what we needed to guide our efforts in treatment and prevention at the Washington Baltimore Ida. The person I'm speaking about is going to speak next, Dr. Laura Papar, who is now the Deputy Director for the Washington Baltimore Ida Treatment and Prevention and the Director of ADAPT. 
Dr. Papard has 17 years of clinical experience as a licensed psychiatric nurse practitioner in emergency inpatient and outpatient settings. She's developed innovative system-wide programs to address unmet substance use and behavioral health needs of underserved military and serious mental illness populations. She also serves as a community, state, and national consultant on substance use and behavioral health prevention and integration models, and has authored several peer-reviewed publications on her work. Dr. Papard and her ADAPT team are well-versed at bringing evidence-based strategies to life as they have with today's summit. Dr. Papard. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And a special thank you to Shannon and Jamie for hosting our summit this year. As Tom mentioned, I'm the director of a division for advancing prevention and treatment. And what an honor it is to serve as that. ADAPT has been the training and technical assistance provider for HIDA prevention programming across the nation for a little over a year and a half now. We've had an opportunity to work with all of you in some way, shape, or form by delivering public facing events just like this one, but also a little more intimately with some of you through our individual technical assistance. Our mission through ADAPT is to advance knowledge, skills, and quality outcomes in the field of substance use prevention while supporting successful integration, true integration of evidence-based strategies into communities. Last year, our summit focused on the fundamentals of substance use prevention. That was important to us to help build that knowledge base and equip you with skills to launch substance use prevention in your communities or to enhance the quality of what you are already operating. But this year, we're taking a slightly different spin. This year, we wanna really focus on ways of thinking about substance use prevention. I know it's a little early to start with a little Einstein, but I think it's important. And I really would be remiss if I didn't use this quote from Einstein to ground us in today's summit. No problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. Level of consciousness that Einstein was referring to, that really means our understanding and awareness of what's happening in our surroundings. As it relates to substance use, what's going on with substance use? We've developed a lot of really great strategies, evidence-based strategies that we know are effective that we're implementing today. But I can guarantee you that none of you will argue with me when I say the problem has not been solved yet. We are still in the midst of a substance use epidemic. And so there's still room to grow. There's still more understanding. There's still more awareness. And so our focus for the summit is on our perspective. And when I say perspective, I mean our point of view, the way that we see the world. And in order to shape today's summit, we really need to break down perspective. And it really is what we're thinking about. So the content that we chew on related to substance use, but also how we're processing that, how we're thinking about it, how we're connecting it to other content and making sense of it. And what informs then our perspective and the what and the how essentially is our experiences. It's our experiences, it's our experiences in learning. So just like today, we've created a dynamic learning experience for you. It's our relational experiences and our social experiences but it's also our environmental experiences, what's happening at home, what's happening in the school, what's happening in our larger environment. And so why is perspective so important? I'll tell you why, because it informs the way that we feel, but it also informs the way that we behave and what we do about it. So today we've designed a variety of different presentations to both inform the content, but also help you enhance and elevate the way that you think about substance use prevention. Today's experience will be dynamic. I'm very excited about it. And hopefully it will raise our level of consciousness as Einstein was proposing and really contribute to our work, our ultimate work in prevention moving forward. Many of you are new to ADAPT. And so I've listed just a few things here that you can get access to on our website, which is on the bottom right hand of your screen. On our website, you will see that we've launched a variety of different series at the beginning of this year. You have access to those through our website. We are connected very well in social media now, just launched our Twitter account for this summit. So you're able to stay in touch with the latest 
announcements of events, but also our Prevention Post newsletter, which is going to be launched at the end of this year. A little housekeeping for today. We will be posting a housekeeping supplement in your chat box. We'll do that right now so that you have access to it and can download it. All of your sessions, you will be joining from the lobby just as you did for this one this morning. If you will close out of each session, you will need to enter the next link. Please give us one to two minutes. Sometimes there's some transition and then we will be joining you at the next session, but you will need to close out of each link and re-enter the next session from your lobby area. You will notice at the bottom of your screen that you have a chat box as well as a Q&A box. The chat box is a one-way box for us to communicate with you. We will be downloading a link to all of our supplements in that chat box at the beginning and end of every session. We will also be posting the housekeeping document there. In regards to supplements, we have prepared a beautiful resource supplement similar to last year, and it is a little over 80 pages, also similar to last year. It consists of all of the resources that our presenters recommend for you over and beyond what they are describing in their presentations. It also will include resources from our federal partners in this space, because it's really important that we connect you with those at every opportunity. You will also be able to access from the website all of our speaker biographies, their full biographies, as well as all of the slides for today's summit. Some of our speakers have requested that those slides not be posted until the conclusion of their presentation. So some are up there now, some will be available towards the end of the summit. In regards to evaluations, there will be two. The first one is an overall summit evaluation that will be posted both in your chat box at the end of the day as well as email to you, anyone who's participated in today's event will get a link to the summit evaluation through email. If you are here to also obtain continuing education credits, we are happy to offer those to you this year. They will be offered through NADAC. All of the information related to those credits will be enclosed in your housekeeping document, and you will need to complete a separate evaluation for each session that you would like a CE for. So I want to repeat that. If you would like CEs for each session, there will be a separate evaluation for each. You can obtain up to six. All right, and with that, what we are going to do is we're now going to close up our opening remarks session. You will close out of this. You will re-enter the lobby and we'll join you on the other side at our next link to hear from Director LaBelle. Thank you.